first of all, before I start, I, I'm not used to these. So I noticed when the young man was speaking, I couldn't hear him here. But up here, it seems kind of weird. <laughs> and the other thing is, is I'm deaf in this ear, and I have very little hearing in this ear. So if there's questions, please expect me to re ask you to repeat. Or I might get somebody to be my interpreter. So, my birth name is Sammy Joe. I have multifaceted names that were gifted to me all over the world. I was gifted the name of Mother Moon from the children in Africa. I took it and kept it because names that come from innocence resonate to my heart. Um, can you hear me if I don't use this? Yes. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody might have to turn it off. I'll try to project my voice, and i also try to walk up and down. And if somebody can't hear me, please let me know. That's foreign to me, so I don't do well with it. I like to answer, even when I do storytelling, by the way, I'll weave a few stories in here because sometimes... Our stories are in metaphor, so they're better teachers than our, our everyday words. Um, one of the first questions I get from children, from adults, is, why do Native Americans have so much fringe? Not just on what they wear, but on all of our medicine. <coughs> it's on everything we use. So I will tell you, when the first fringe is cut, the first two, there is a prayer for my parents, whether they're deceased or they're here. The next ones on either side are for my grandparents on both sides. We continue on to for the two-legged that we love, then we add the two-legged that we don't know, and those that are to come seven generations forward. The next prayer with the next friends goes to our four-legged, <coughs> our winged, our creepy crawly ones, our swimming ones, our standing tall ones, and for all the no-seeing ones. So what it boils down to, you see all this fringe? We call it my relation, metakwiasen. So, the friendly joke among the people is, uh, looks like we're afraid to be alone. <laughs> because when I dance, and all movement is dance to us. If we walk, we dance. So if we, we dance, do you see the friends move? All my relation dance with me. Not only do they dance with me, but the friend moves energy. So how I move, I can create energy or I can bring down energy. So whatever's needed at the time, when I do dances, I watch people dance, I watch where their energy level is, and I try to see where they need help. So the fringe on my garments, the fringe on my shawl, if I think they need more energy. This is a grandmother shawl. Then I use more energy. I use it this way, and I use it this way. Our people won't let Women go into a ceremony without a shawl because this shawl is armor and in this prayers of this shawl is all my people, all the people of my blood. 
So if I put this shawl around you, you will feel the native people and they will assist you in whatever you need. So there's the fringe stuff. I'm Chippewa and Cree. My mother says I'm Heinz 57 because I am not full blood. So I have a little bit of everything in me. I haven't quite decided what else. My heart is native. Although I'm not quite sure because I've decided that I love all people of the world. I've not yet been to one country that we all don't laugh the same. We all don't love the same. Well, but we love. And we protect our family. I haven't been to one country that wants war. I've decided it should be a, a requirement of every high school student before they start college to travel. Because if they did, there would be no wars. And my generation, and as you can see, it's been a little ways back. There was so much prop propaganda at home that we were sure that uh, Russian people were devils. We were told they were. Not so. So, I'm an advocate for life and for love. If I have any power in this world, the only power I have is my capacity to love. In our dances, I tell our moon mothers that are in there taking care of the dancers, do not enter this arbor, this sacred place, unless you can love a stranger unconditionally. Do not enter this arbor if you have an issue with a friend that you can't leave at the gate. Because this isn't a time for you to work out your personal stuff. This is a time for you to push out love. There's nothing bigger than love. <coughs> Our job, in, any, in my opinion, you can erase it if you want. You can take your own. Because I'm not an absolute anything. The, mo the greatest power you can have as a healer, or whatever you call yourself, is love. Because love is your higher power no matter how you perceive your higher power. It's love. The center of all higher power is love. So if you don't want to take a higher power, you can set it aside. The center of you, of your very, very wise, ancient wisdom keeper, and every single one of you have that, is love. That's the reason it gives you the correct answers, even if you don't like them. And I've had a few I didn't like. Um, we just got done doing a dance. It's called the Sun Moon Dance. It was the very first dance in South Africa. It had 27 da dancers, which, which is about unheard of for the first dance. The arbor, which is what we dance in, a round circle, is a sacred place to our people. That arbor was full of medicine people. And I want to cry right now because this is the second arbor in this room full of medicine people. And I see you. I see all of you. 
I know you are healers. And all kinds of aspects of those. Now, I have no idea why I'm up here speaking to medicine healers. But I, in the dance, I saw this wonderful medicine woman carrying these two gorgeous crystals, dancing up and down to the pole. And I watched her. I said, those are wonderful tools. I said, now lay them down. Because they're not the medicine. You're the medicine. I don't care what medallia you work in. I don't care what you use. I'm not saying it's not good. And I'm not saying it doesn't help you. But you are the medicine. A lot of you know that. And I am probably right now going to tell you, I'm not going to say one thing that you do not know. And you'll know it's truth because you'll be in there going, I know that. I know that. I already know that. You do know that. <coughs> but my people call me a tapper. A tapper is one who walks up and says, remember who you are. And you are far more. You think you're powerful now? Uh-uh. You are all far more powerful than you can even imagine. And it's not ego. If it's ego, you're not in your full power. But you all think you're doing good work? You watch what tomorrow brings. It's going to bring magnificence. Absolute, positive magnificence. So, before I forget it, the sun moon dance, well, I take one step backwards. Our people believe we spiral, we work in to complete a hoop, to spiral up, to complete another hoop, to spiral up, to complete another hoop. Most people believe things are this way. Now, there are things that way, but we believe we're spiraling up straight back to the source where we came from. So we have a dance, this dance I just had, and it starts with the East, which is New Beginnings, which is what we just be begun. We went that, we, we, clo we expanded the hoop. We, completed that first hoop. The next one goes to give us balance, just like the seasons give us balance. The metaphor is the same, that when we go whatever order, mental, physical, spiritual, I'm always leaving one out. Emotional. Okay, I'm a real good example of not having balance. And I paid the consequences of not having balance. I came in very spiritual. It was easy. I worked very hard on my emotional. I am still working on my emotional because I'm exceptionally sensitive. No matter what it is, I am. I worked hard on my mental. Because I am not a left brain, we have, probably have a lot of people in here that are left brains. I'm not. I'm still led almost totally by emotion in my heart. So I have to find balance in that. I did not work and did not even understand my physical. And I'm telling you this because I'm going to ask you to look at yourself in the mirror. I want you to do your own personal checklist. This is just my suggestion. This is just, that's all. I recommend you do this. 
see and which of those areas that you could use a little help are that you haven't worked on that much. I found out that I could love my body. I didn't even feel connected to my body. I finally am. But not before I, I damaged myself in many areas, not just one, many areas. So I'm doing old age a little difficultly. If you find balance early, your fifth step of Your fifth rites of passage will be easier. So look at that. So this dance, the first year goes from one step, that full circle. So you're required to dance four dances to bring you balance. So I invite you all next year when I return <laughs> to the sun moon dance to please come and fill the arbor. I had a very full arbor and very amazing medicine people. And I believe with all my heart and soul that we're happier beings when we are serving. That our job is to heal ourselves. And for those that prefer not to really be touched, and this isn't pointing you out, by the way. I'm just using you as an example. <laughs> I suggest you touch. Because whoever you touch, not only do I get from him or whomever I touch, they give me. It never goes one way. It always goes this way. Please touch. Touch the person next to you. I'm telling you, it's heavenly. It truly is. It's, you want to know magic? That's magic. It's magic to be touched. So, if there's anybody in here that doesn't feel like they're a healer, I have a surprise for you. You are. Yeah, you are. So, let me think of more questions, Native American. Hmm. Somebody said, what do you believe in? I believe that when any child, by the way, you are everything from infant to ancient wisdom, you still have that infant in you. Do not think it grew up. It did not. Don't think that toddler grew up. It just grew. We are everything we have ever been. Work at holding on to that child within yourself because that child knows how to bring you joy. And besides that, your child is magical. People usually really love me, are scared to death of me. And every time I see fear, on their face. My child just is alive and well. It jumped right out. They feel far more at home with the child than they do with the old woman. They think the old woman has some kind of uh, magic that she'll use. <laughs> Sometimes she does, but the magic is 
Hello. I happen to know her, but I could not. But what I don't, I don't just know this. I know her heart. And give me a couple minutes and I'll know yours. Our heart is always <coughs> honest. Our mind, it's like water. It's impressionable. Our heart's not. Our heart tells us, warning, warning. Now, it may not say exactly what the warning is, but it just says, be awake, really awake, be cautious, and then the warning needs to go away. Because warning brings fear. Warning, then you chew it away because we can't live by fear. Fear is an emotion that is nothing but an alarm system. I got to be careful, guys, because I dumped over water earlier. And knowing me, I'll do it again. <laughs> so. You want me to I would appreciate it. Thank you, Susie. The thing I started to tell you and just went down another pathway was I believe that every baby that is born, God says, the earth, the universe needs that vibration in this moment. Each and every one of us, we vibrate in multiple vibrations. But the first vibration we vibrate from is that which is innate, that doesn't matter what we learn and how we raise or lower our vibration. We can adjust that. But the first one we're born in is what the universe is calling for, just for balance. So another experiment you can do, if you haven't already done it, In fact, I would encourage you to find out what that first vibration is because it's power. When you first walk up to a single person or a crowd, what exactly is happening? I found out that I don't have to say a word. If you've been procrastinating and saying, I should join that class, I should do this, and I plan to do this, invite me to dinner. You'll do it. I don't have to say anything. I just have to be present. The other thing I believe with that singular vibration, the entire universe, Every living thing, when you are born as an infant, goes, Yay! Finally, they're here. They are welcoming you. They are saying, Thank you for coming. We needed you. And the enti your entire life, it drinks you up. And I don't mean in a way that you're empty. Mm -mm. But it uses your vibration to become whole. And so the next baby, and the next baby, and the next baby, and we'll continually expand. Continually expand. I love the way the Mormons, I like different belief systems. I weave them in where they fit for me. And I don't know exactly how they fit sometimes, but they resonate to me. Is there any Mormons in here? Yeah, Mormons believe that each generation that come in is the generation that's closer to God. So, your children, your grandchildren, that's the reason the children are so absolutely brilliant that are born. That's the reason they can 
catch on to technology quicker than we have. I've decided, don't quote this. <laughs> I've decided that they take lessons up in heaven. <laughs> because I'm still going to my granddaughter, please set up my, an my answering, the, what's it called, recorder? Voice message. Voice message. <laughs> and she goes, oh, Grammy. I made it the easiest I could make it. And I go, what is my code? She said, listen carefully, Grammy. One, 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 one. I said, you didn't tell me. She said, yes, I did, Grammy. So I'm constantly asking the children Riding over here, Susie's daughters were with us. I handed them, I don't get to see them very often, but I handed them the phone. I didn't ask Susie or any other adult that was in the car. I said, please, will you put these numbers in the phone? I called Susie today and I had this guy goes, this is, I don't know, some African name. And I said, sorry, wrong number. I didn't have the right number. And if I had to do a short answer about what we believe in, we believe in integrity and honor. If we don't stay integrity with ourselves and with others, We aren't spiraling up. Your work isn't going to be good. We have a wonderful gift that was given to us. This was given by Buffalo Calf Woman white buffalo calf woman. And basically, the essence of this, what we believe and our medicine is, if we are a pipe carrier and we are not honest, this pipe will bite me. For instance, what I'm meaning is if the elders are called in to solve a problem and somebody is saying somebody's doing A, B, C, D, the first questions they ask, are they a pipe carrier? If they say yes, they get up and they walk out. They don't have to do anything. This pipe will do it. When we receive our medicine bag, The medicine person will coat the inside with cornmeal, tobacco, sage, the herbs of the four directions. Then they'll cut a tiny little piece, not a big piece, piece of hair from everybody you love including who you perceive as a teacher. By the way, no, my dry sense of humor wouldn't work right now. <laughs> we put it in a prayer tie, itty bitty one, and we, the first thing that goes in is those people we love. Now, this medicine bag is exceptionally powerful. And I'm saying that with a twinkle in my eye because it's not the object. It's the metaphor of yourself. 
because everything that happens in your life that is like a, I think Dr. Phil says or Oprah says something about a pivotal point in your life, something significant that you're going to keep at that time. We ask you to pick up something from the earth to remember that time, to hold that energy of that moment, and you put it in your medicine bag. Because if I if I'm having trouble or don't quite know what's happening, here I'll tell you a little story. It's an African story. It's my experience in Africa. We had a sweat lodge. And I'm outside the sweat lodge. And I heard this voice inside the sweat lodge. Now I knew it wasn't a voice of any person that was in there. I went, Oh, hello. I said, what are you doing in there? And they said, you can hear me? I said, oh, yes, I could hear you. There was a beautiful young African woman that was a Singoma. When she exited The Nipi, the sweat lodge, I grabbed her with this with one hand, I put it on her chest, and with this hand I grabbed her back. And I said, leave. I did not know that she had gone to Sangoma after Sangoma after Sangoma and was told she had to live with this person or whatever you want to call it. I said, no, it wasn't an evil entity. It was an old medicine person that wanted to know what it felt like to be in a beautiful woman's body. You're the captain of your ship. All you have to say is, I forbid you here. I forbid you here. If you are not here for my better good, for my, I'm rewarding this wrong, um, then I forbid you, you, ha you have to leave. They have to leave, guys. You're the master of this body, of this mind, of this heart, of this soul. 